The current collapse of the office property market on the Chinese mainland is happening much faster than anticipated. In cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, office buildings are experiencing a significant increase in vacancy rates, reaching highs. Simultaneously, rental prices have hit new lows. The vacancy rate for office buildings in first-tier cities on the mainland has surpassed 20%, achieving the highest point in over a decade, and rental prices continue to decline, returning to levels seen more than 10 years ago, a situation many find hard to imagine. A Shanghai resident said he bought a house in Pudong for $5 million in 2020 and wants to sell it for $3 million, but it's been listed for a long time and he still waits for people to see it. The mortgage from the bank is still nearly $3 million, causing a lot of worry. Hundreds of foreclosed homes emerge monthly in Shenzhen, and behind each is another shattered family. It's because nearly 20% of the population in Shenzhen needs a stable job to guarantee a monthly income. Even though some people earn three to 5000 a month, they can't afford the high monthly mortgage once they are laid off. Areas that were once the most prosperous, such as Zhongguansun and Wangding in Beijing, are now witnessing large-scale vacancies. However, data remains objective and cold. As the central hub for internet companies, places like Zhongguansun in Beijing and Zhangjiang High Tech Park in Shanghai bear the memories of China's internet development. A decade ago, waves of internet startups flocked to these areas. Whenever there were signs of vacant office spaces, startups would compete for leases, reflecting the company's development momentum and their ambitious goals. However, times have changed. The era of internet industry dividends is gone, replaced by persistent regulatory pressure and the severe impact of the pandemic. This has led many internet companies to face financial pressures and profit declines. In this environment, office spaces have become a significant expense that many companies urgently need to cut. For instance, ByteDance, once the largest landlord in Zhongguansun, has been reducing its leasing space over the past two years. Internet giants like Meituan and Tencent have opted to terminate leases in popular office areas. In the month before the new year, everyone usually wants to buy clothes, whether it's clearance, special offers, or regular prices. However, even with clearance, there's no excitement, and the turnover is not coming up. The physical economy this year is tough. A video was taken at a famous mall in Shanghai, Zhengda Plaza, during the prime time when foot traffic should be very high. However, there were few people, and the mall's total number of customers and tourists was estimated at less than 300. Many of the stores and businesses inside were already closed. Even during mealtime, when people usually went out to eat, foot traffic was still sparse. Besides this, the situation was the same in several other malls nearby. Business is extremely bleak. In 2021, Tencent launched around 215,300 square feet, or 20,000 square meters, of office space in the core area of Zhongguansun. The reduction of office space also implies a shrinking workforce for internet companies. For instance, Meituan's office in Wangding used to house around 10,000 employees, but it now stands vacant. Similar situations exist in places like Zhongguansun and Zhangjiang, where internet companies are downsizing their workforce and accelerating the reduction of office space. A decade ago, Shenzhen was a gathering place for foreign enterprises, hosting high-end office buildings such as Shenzhen Center and Shenzhen Bay Technology Ecological Park. Notable foreign companies, including Microsoft, IBM, and Oracle, chose to establish a presence there. However, with increasing tension in US-China relations in recent years, more and more foreign capital has started to leave the country, either withdrawing altogether or shifting their businesses to emerging regions such as Southeast Asia. In the facial recognition payment sector, foreign enterprises have seen a 70% reduction in business in China in recent years. This departure of foreign capital has directly resulted in a decline in demand for office space. Vanguard Group, the world's largest wealth management company, ultimately ended its business in China, closing its office in Shanghai. Similar cases include the departure of French banks, among others. Given the current trend in US-China relations, it's challenging to predict a large influx of foreign capital back into the Chinese market that would fill the gap in office space leasing. The sluggishness of the office property market is not only due to the weakness of particular industries. On a deeper level, it reflects the ongoing downward cycle of the entire Chinese economy, especially the insufficient growth momentum in the service sector.
Office-based demand primarily originates from the tertiary industries, including finance, internet, and business services. The prosperity of these industries directly led to the prosperity of office-based leasing in first-tier cities. However, after the pandemic, the growth rate of China's service industry witnessed a drastic decline, contributing to a significant drop in its share of GDP. A clear signal is the persistently high unemployment rate and a wave of layoffs in industries such as internet, education, and real estate agencies. The contraction of office-based demand is also a tangible reflection of the downturn in the service industry. The chilly outlook of the office property market indicates China's challenging transition towards a service-oriented economy. China's youth are also grappling with a challenging job market, facing many obstacles. Recent job interviews have revealed shockingly low salaries, raising concerns about labor rights. For instance, at Luckin Coffee, an initial hourly wage of $1 for the first 15 days, and even after passing certification, only a meager increase to $2 per hour. Another opportunity at a convenience store offers approximately $9.45 for a 9-hour shift, starting at 7 a.m., adding an extra layer of difficulty. Suzhou, February 1, 2024 Facing a persistently sluggish real estate market, Suzhou City in Jiangsu Province lifted its purchase restrictions on January 30th. Within 24 hours of the policy change, over a thousand second-hand houses in Suzhou lowered their listing prices. This news became a top search trend on Baidu on February 1st. According to the Jugu House Hunting website's report, on the morning of January 31st, 1,245 housing units reduced their prices, while 107 increased their prices within 24 hours. Meanwhile, out of 48,798 available secondhand housing units in Gusu District, Suzhou, 158 experienced price reductions within 24 hours. The reduced amounts ranged from tens of thousands to over a hundred thousand yuan. Three high-priced properties saw reductions of 240,000, 127,800, and 97,000, respectively. Before this, on January 27th, Guangzhou announced the relaxation of real estate purchase restrictions, followed by Shanghai on January 30th. To stimulate the sluggish real estate market, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has continuously introduced various stimulus measures at both central and local levels, hoping to see a rebound. However, the results have yet to be satisfactory. According to data from the China Index Research Institute, in January 2024, the total sales of China's top 100 real estate enterprises amounted to $39.13 million, a year-on-year -year decrease of 33.3% expanding by 1.6 percentage points compared to last year. The monthly sales of the top 100 also fell by 47.7% compared to the previous month. Simultaneously, in January, the sales of the top 10 enterprises decreased by 32.8% year-on-year, and those of the 11th to 30th reduced by 31.5%, the 31st to 30th decreased by 30.4%, the 51st to 100th reduced by 40.5%. In 2023, the total sales of the top 100 real estate enterprises were $87 billion, a 17.3% decrease compared to 2022 during the pandemic. Regarding this successive lifting of purchase restrictions in various regions, independent commentator and columnist Tsai Shen Kuan believes that with major cities like Guangzhou, Suzhou, and Shanghai quickly introducing new policies to rescue the market, the official initiation of the downward trend in China's real estate market has begun. On January 28, prominent commentator Wang Jian mentioned in a self-media program that this move indicated the end of the non-speculative housing policy. However, he remains cautious about whether lifting restrictions can stimulate a rebound in the real estate market. He believes that finding willing buyers remains uncertain due to China's economic downturn people needing more funds, and a lack of confidence in the real estate market.